With a strong lineup of 3D TVs hitting store shelves later this year, people are getting excited. However, there's still a lot of questions about 3D TV and the challenges you get when you try to scale down that 3D movie theater experience into your living room. In this episode, we'll be discussing technologies that go into these TVs and answer some common questions about 3D TV. We'll also be discussing the new 3D Blu-ray format, 3D gaming, and more. With all this buzz around 3D TV, there comes a lot of rumors and misconceptions. In this episode, we're going to provide the information that will clear some things up once and for all. First off, you will need glasses if you want to watch 3D TV. There's no easy way around that one. And personally, I'm not looking forward to wearing two pairs of glasses, but hey, it's a small price to pay for having 3D cinema in your living room. Many people don't want to watch everything in 3D. You'll be glad to know that we, you do have a choice. Um, the 3D function can be turned on and off at any time. This might just turn out to be something that's ideal for sports and movies. I'm not actually looking forward to seeing commercials in 3D since they're already pretty abrasive. Another cool thing about 3D TV is that they're converters that turn your existing 2D media into 3D. So while right now there might not be a lot of 3D content available, you can bring new life to your DVD or Blu-ray collection by converting them to 3D. Some TVs like the Sony are going to have built-in converters so you can watch 3D right out of the box. If you want to experience full HD 3D, it looks like you're going to have to buy a new TV. The hope of buying an adapter to put on your current HD TV is unlikely. That's because 3D TV requires a much higher refresh rate of about 240 hertz, which is almost double what you'd find on LCDs that are on the store shelves. For some 3D TVs that use active shutter technology, you'll only be paying a slightly higher price on the TV, but the glasses may cost you 50 to 100 bucks a pair. Other 3D TVs that use polarized film will be more expensive, but will offer cheaper glasses. 3D TV has appeared and disappeared many times throughout history. Remember the Virtual Boy? So, naturally, people are a bit skeptical if 3D TV will be a success. It still has a lot of challenges to overcome in the living room. One potential problem is ambient light reducing the 3D effect. Some TVs we saw at CES were inside small enclosures with curtains. But in a living room environment, you have different ambient light sources, different viewing angles, and it's yet to be seen how much that's going to affect the viewing experience. The biggest challenge, by far, are the requirements of those clunky 3D glasses. It seems no one's looking forward to wearing them. Uh, quite a few people have actually complained of headaches or eye strain from the experience. So while the demo TVs look legit, 3D TV is yet to be tested in the living room. Next, let's take a look at the technologies that are going into these glasses. 